Good morning, everyone. And a very warm welcome to worship this day. Welcome to this place of love and grace. Welcome to this place of hope and perseverance. We are welcome just as we are. We come to worship God in the hymn, singing we gladly worship the Lord together.
we come before God in prayer, let us pray. God of the rain, wind and sunshine, your hand is in all creation. You made everything with a purpose, including us. Guide us so that we may be fruitful upon this earth, so that we may care for all, for all your creation, the way that you care for us. May our words and actions build a better world. We give thanks for this morning, set aside for us to come and worship you. We give thanks for everyone here for today's service. Lord of this new morning, hear our prayer. We come this morning in gratitude for all the good things in our lives our friends, our families, our homes, and our livelihoods, our daily bread, and the gift of your love. Loving God, we come to you to confess our sins, the times when we have shown indifference for others. Grant us compassion. Forgive us when we have been short-tempered or thoughtless in our speech. Grant us patience. Lord, there is a great need in our world. Open our eyes to that need. Help us to respond in prayer and our resources. Be with us, Lord, as we gather here in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Do love the pom-poms. Wish I could get away with wearing something like that. Wouldn't it be great? But I don't have enough hair to pull back, so. So how are you this week? Good, I'm glad to hear it. Tomorrow, what does tomorrow bring? Have you forgotten already? You're going back to school. That's right. The Easter holidays are over. And I think it's only about another six weeks until you get holidays again. So isn't that good? I'm looking forward to the six weeks of rest because I have been on grandmother duty and I'm tired this week. I did almost see an alpaca, but we hadn't booked, so we could just look at a distance. But we're going to go back in the summer holidays and book online so that we can go on an alpaca trek. So that's going to be good. So what have you been doing in, this, in the Easter holidays? You went to a hotel? Lovely. How many days did you spend there? Two. Oh, wonderful. Anybody else do something exciting? For one night to see your cousins. And was that good fun? See, these are the things we can do. It was the science festival. My goodness, so much fun. Did you get lots of experiments to do and you could see how things work? Yeah. What about you? You've gone shy on me. Ah, that's okay. It's okay to be shy. Well, I was thinking about boys and girls and about how much fun that we have here. And you know that sometimes boys and girls can be really funny in things that they say. 
I don't know if you've ever said something and everybody around you starts to laugh because it's simply either funny or you've got the wrong end of the stick. Do you know what that means? That means to kind of misunderstand something. So anyway, I'm still spring cleaning. Now, those of you must say, how long does this spring cleaning go on for? Well, you see, I'm not very good at it because I go into a cupboard and I find something. And what do I do? Either sit down and play with it, or if it's in my study, like this, I found a book that I have not had my eyes on for years. So what do you think I did? Sat down, you're right, put the kettle on and had a cup of coffee, which then meant that my, what I was doing didn't get done. And it's this book is called Out of the Mouth of Babies. And I looked at it and I thought, where on earth did I get this? Thankfully, somebody had written an inscription on it. An inscription, you know, that is when the, somebody writes something to you. And it says, for Barbara, with lots of love, for this from the Sunday School, in June 2014. So it's been on the shelf for all that time. And it's all about things that children say. And I thought I would share some of them with you today. Just a few, because they made me smile. And I actually thought about you when I was reading them. And I thought, that's what we'll do this Sunday. And the first one's called A Mother's Love. A mother dropped her son off for his first day at primary school. And she was very proud of him in his brand new school uniform. And at the gate, she kissed him and hugged him over and over again. And she said, darling, be a good little bunnykins for your mother. Mummy loves her baby boy very much. So off she went. And at the end of the school day, the little boy came out of the school gates to find his mother waiting, arms wide open. And she was giving him a big hug. And she said, what did my little soldier learn today? I learned, replied her son very seriously, that my name is David. <laughs> you see, our mummy loved, loved him so much that she had all these little pet names. And she learned that his name was David. Now let's see if I can find another one. Oh yes. This is again about mummies. It's called Home Help. Amy was a bright, sweet, inquisitive child. And one day, while she was talking with her daddy, she confessed that she didn't really understand what marriage meant. So her father went and fetched the wedding photo album. And they went through it together. And he explained all about the ceremony and the vows and the party and the cutting of the cake and so on. And at the end of the album, he turned to his daughter and said, Now do you understand? I think so, said Amy. Is that when mummy came to work for us? <laughs> I think she needs to learn a wee bit more about what her mummy really was. But you see how funny little ones. I've got two more. And this one is called Thou Shalt Not. One day in school... Mrs. Gordon was discussing the Ten Commandments with her class of ten-year-olds. And after explaining in detail the commandments to honour thy father and thy mother, she asked if there was a commandment that teaches us how we should treat our brothers and sisters. And one little girl put up her hand and shouted out, Thou shalt not kill. <laughs> so you see, these are all, they're all funny things, but... They have a seriousness to them as well. And this one I couldn't help but laugh. And it's really silly when you're sitting in the house on your own and you're laughing. Uh, it used to be okay when I had a dog because I felt, well, maybe he heard me. But this just made me laugh. It's all in the print. It's called, A five-year-old little girl called Melanie went with her dad to a farm to see a litter of kittens. On returning home, Melanie informed her mother that there were three male kittens and four female kittens. How did you know that? asked her mum. 
Dad picked them up and looked underneath, Melanie said, and I think it's printed on their bottoms. <laughs> now, you see, this book is just so full. You can maybe take it with you, and if you've got time, you can maybe read another one or two. But this is great because we live in a world that where children are valued and we take time with our children. But I was also thinking too, after I read all that, I thought about the places in the world where boys and girls today are very sad because their lives have been turned upside down. There are many places where there is war, there are places where crops have failed and there is famine. So you see our world kind of two halves, isn't it? It's a world of those who are perhaps okay and the other side of that world, the other half is that they're not. So I thought this morning that we would just say a little prayer for the boys and girls in our world. So let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for all that we have, our family, our school and our friends. And we pray this morning for the boys and girls in our world who are sad or lonely and who find today a real challenge to them. Lord God and Jesus, remind us of this and we ask for your blessing upon them today and every day. Amen. We're going to sing a, a, a hymn this morning and it's got the whole world in his hands. Do you know the actions for it? No? Very easy. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wild world. Do you think you can try that when we're singing? And we'll see if the, how good the congregation are as well. And then we go on to say, he's got everybody here, which is lovely. He's got the tiny baby. And he's got you and me, brother. So, let's join our voices together this morning in the hymn, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. Before reading from the Bible, we will remain seated and sing our prayer for understanding. I cannot tell you, I cannot tell why he whom angels worship shall set his love upon the sons of man.
The reading this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, and I'll be reading verses 12 to 19, and this can be found on page 1095 in the Pew Bibles. Uh, To put the reading in context, you have to understand that Peter and John had gone to the temple, and there was a beggar at the door of the temple, and Peter, he asked Peter for money, and Peter said to him, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And they helped the beggar walk into the temple. And he held on to Peter and John as they were going into the temple. And all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. Listen to and hear the word of the Lord. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed. And you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he'd foretold you through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. We'll continue to worship God now by singing the marvellous Scottish paraphrase, I'm not ashamed to own my Lord. Let us pray. Open our minds to the word and our hearts to your love. Amen. 
as you heard this morning's reading from the Acts of the Apostle, requires to be set in context. If you simply start reading before reading the first ten verses of the chapter, it is a little confusing. And what we read in those first ten verses are the fact that Peter and John encountered a man in the temple. A man who sat there every day because of his disability. And when Peter and John pass, the man thought that they would give him alms. And instead, in the words of that inspired and modern hymn, Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have, that I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And Peter helped the man up. And then we hear the words, the man went walking and leaping and praising God. And of course, all the people saw it and were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. As the lame man was healed, he held on to Peter and John and all the people came together to the porch that is called Solomon's. And they were greatly wondering why this had happened. Solomon's porch, as also known as Solomon's portico, was part of the Jerusalem temple where the rabbis often conducted their teaching. It was a covered walkway or a colonnade on the eastern side of the temple in Jerusalem. And we can imagine that this man has sat at the gate of the temple and everyone would have known him. He would have been a common sight at the gate. At this time, everyone knew that there was no cure for someone who had been born lame and his condition would have been considered incurable. Then the amazing thing happens. Someone who they considered hopeless was now walking, leaping, and praising God. The magnitude of this meant that the crowd attributed this miraculous healing to Peter and John. It is the healing of the lame man that was to draw the crowd more and more coming together. And of course, This gives Peter a perfect opportunity to proclaim the risen Christ, to preach. So the crowd gather, and I'm sure that news would have spread quickly once the man who was lame from birth is walking. So Peter begins his dialogue with a question, and it's a discerning question. You men of Israel, why do you marvel at this man? Why do you fasten your eyes on us as though by our own power or godliness we have made him walk? Indeed, a challenging question for all who stood watching, and perhaps many of them not understanding. So this rather captive audience is where Peter begins and his first act is to correct the misconception. It was neither their power nor their piety that made it possible for the man to walk. In verse 16 of chapter 3, Peter will tell them who was responsible but first he will preach to them a sermon, boldly declaring that Jesus, whom God had raised from the dead, was the Prince of Life. He reminded them that they had been the people who had killed the Prince of Life. The choice was made when they delivered up Jesus to Pilate, when they asked 
for a murderer to be given up rather than Jesus. Now Peter makes this point quite strongly to the crowd. They were responsible for handing over Jesus to death, for rejecting their Messiah. They did so in spite of Pilate's verdict that Jesus was not guilty and Pilate's repeated proposals to flog Jesus and then to release him. But the crowd demanded that Pilate release Barabbas, a murderer, instead of Jesus. Now I have often wondered why Peter took this opportunity to remind everyone of what had happened. And of course, I will never know his thinking. And although he makes all the points of who was responsible for Jesus' death, he moves to answer their question, who made the healing of the lame man possible? You remember Peter's words. He said, by faith in his name, his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which is through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. It was God's servant Jesus, the holy and the righteous one, the author of life, who made that healing possible. It is faith in Jesus' name that made the lame man strong. It is faith in Jesus that made it possible for the man's health to be restored to a perfect health. A question has often been asked as to whether it was the lame man's faith or Peter's faith that proved effective in harnessing the healing power of Jesus. Now opinions differ, but on balance it has to be Peter's faith. Because if we remember, the lame man looked to Peter and John only for arms to get him through another day. It was Peter who said to him, get up and walk. It was Peter who took the lame man by the hand and raised him up. And it was only when Peter had brought the lame man to his feet that the lame man's feet and ankles started to work and he walked. Peter concluded his sermon by emphasising that God had raised up his servant Jesus to bless them by turning them away from their wicked ways in repenting of their sins. His words were this, Repent therefore and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. And then amongst there is faith. Now faith has a multitude of definitions. It is complete trust or confidence in someone or a strong belief in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual conviction rather than proof. Faith is an integral part of who we are those called to follow the risen Christ. Last Sunday in our benediction, I used the phrase, Easter people. You see, this phrase had caught my eye and I reflected throughout the week on it further. If we are Easter people, then by definition, we are an Easter church. Now, I can perhaps hear you saying, so what is that? An Easter church 
is a church devoted to proclaiming and bearing witness to Jesus that includes speaking the truth, hearing however hard it may be. And it also gives us all the opportunity to share the good news with each other and with others outside of our church. An Easter church submits to Jesus' authority, acknowledging the power of Jesus' name. The lame man was not healed through Peter's preaching. He was not healed to provide an entertainment to the crowds. He was healed because he responded to Christ's authority and had faith in the name of Jesus. Peter proclaimed, his name itself has made this man strong. An Easter church cannot be suppressed. It keeps healing, proclaiming, and persevering in Christ's name, assured of his presence. This is what an Easter church looks like. This is his church, a place that draws people and points people to our Lord. On this, the third Sunday of Easter, we as members of our Easter church, well, we need to jump to our feet and proclaim the good news that he is risen and that he is a force in our world today. How do we do that? Well, it requires us to be full of the joy of Easter, praising God in such a profound way that people want to find out more. They want to know what the commotion is all about. They want to have what we have. All glory be to him. Amen. Choir now sing our morning anthem, all in the April evening.
Thanks be to God for praise in the music. We pray now for our world. Each week our prayers become more and more heartfelt as we look upon our world, where every day it becomes more troubled, fractured or broken. Let us meet God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord of our world, in all the lands of the earth and in all the islands of the world, your name be praised. We bring before you our world, praying for redemption, healing and renewal. As we look out onto our world through the advancement of technology, we see all that goes on in every country. Gracious God, we remember rulers and politicians whose decisions affect the lives of millions for good or for ill. May they respect the dignity of life and do all in their power to lift the burdens of those they have power over. Hear our prayer for all who live under the fear of threat and conflict. We pray this day for the work of all organisations that go to the aid of others. Watch over those who walk on dangerous paths. Those who put themselves at risk for the benefit of others. Keep them from being overwhelmed when they find great need. And we pray they find hope in unexpected places. Lord, we bring before you the events of overnight in Israel. We bring before you all who live in fear. We pray that a diplomatic solution can be agreed and that talks of peace can be progressed instead of war. Loving and living God, we remember all who today will care and counsel those who are ill, at home, in care homes, or in hospital. May they sense the needs in those whom they care for, showing compassion and kindness. We acknowledge the faith and the service of all who have gone before us, living their faith and serving their Lord Jesus Christ, and are now at home in the kingdom of heaven. Eternal God, as we bring before you our world, we bring before you ourselves. May we grow in our faith to serve and to spread the good news of the gospel. We offer these, our prayers, spoken in the name of the risen Christ. All glory be to him. Amen. We bring our time of fellowship to a close as we sing a hymn that gives us great assurance that indeed Jesus is ours. The hymn number 561, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, O oh, What a Foretaste of Glory Divine.
now in peace. Into God's gracious care and protection I commit you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Thank you.